Let's look at coincidences, shall we? We see in science it is all consistent with what the scriptures tell us. I call it, what are the odds game? Literally, everything lines up with the empirical evidence of today. Science interpreted the data all wrong and wielded a fake story of evolution. Since that time, they have put an evolutionary spin on the data to present it as truth. So this game should help you prove the validity of scriptures to you, as supposedly sheep herders over 5,000 years ago wrote down what science only today has found to be true. That would be like you at 12 years old writing in your diary about the world 5,000 years from now and getting every single prediction correct worldwide. What are the odds that the Bible describes God as stretching out the heavens 17 times? Today, we now know that the shape of the universe described is exactly that. What are the odds that the Bible says that God moved over the surface of the waters and spoke and created light? Sonoluminescence proves the very first sentence of scripture of the Bible to be accurate and true. There is no way in which man could have known this thousands of years ago. What are the odds that science proved early Earth was highly oxygenated and saturated? Totally the opposite of what evolutionists tell us, and totally opposite of what is required for abiogenesis to work. What are the odds that the Bible mentions Pangaea when there was a single supercontinent? What are the odds in a time when people believed that the world was flat, or that a giant named Atlas held the world on his shoulders. The Bible describes the earth being held up by nothing. What are the odds out of all of the bones for man to be made out of, the Bible states which God chose the rib, the only one that is discovered almost recently that is the only bone in the human body to regrow after it is removed. What are the odds that when we read the Bible, it states that God took Adam's rib to make Eve, and since Adam's DNA had two original chromosome twos, which contained four nucleobases containing A, G, C, and T, representing the four nucleotide bases for DNA strands, this tells us that Adam was the father of all men. If we all started with just one man, Adam, like the Bible says, then we should only see four nucleobases in the human DNA today. If evolution were true, then there would be many male ancestors to all of humanity. Then there would be a huge genetic diversity and far more than four nucleobases present in mankind. But what does the evidence actually show? We see that there are only four nucleobase letters from Adam's two original chromosome twos and no other. Therefore, genetics proves creation as well, as it places tremendous limit on the amount of genetic diversity we see in the world today. You see, even if there were just four different individual males, then that would mean that there would be 16 possible nucleobases in man's two Y chromosomes. Since that is not what we see, not only does it verify creation from a single male ancestor, but it verifies the biblical account and only one paternal line going back to Adam, with no other males alive. What are the odds that Hebrews 11 describes what only recently has been found to be true? By faith we understand that the universe was formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made by the things that are visible. Now it is known that all visible matter exists of invisible elements like atoms, yet the Bible knew this thousands of years ago. What are the odds? that Job 38 describes the oceans as having springs. Only today with technology has man gotten down to investigate the dark high pressure conditions of the oceans to find that the Bible was right. And it was impossible for Job to know this or have ever explored to find these underground ocean springs. What are the odds that the Bible describes the earth as round? In Isaiah 40:22, which mentions the circle of the earth this description is certainly fitting, particularly when the view of the earth is seen from space. The earth always appears as a circle since it is round. Job 26.10 suggests a God's eye view of the earth. This verse teaches that God has inscribed a circle on the surface of the waters and a boundary of light and darkness. This boundary between light and darkness, or day and night, is called the terminator, since the light stops or terminates there.
Someone standing on the Terminator would be experiencing either a sunrise or a sunset. They are going from day to night, or from night to day. The Terminator is always a circle, because the Earth is round. This biblical passage would be nonsense if the Earth was flat, since there would be no true Terminator. There is no line to step over that separates day from night on a flat Earth. What are the odds that the Bible teaches that the universe obeys physical laws? Jeremiah 33 mentions the ordinances of heaven and earth. What are the odds that Psalms mention the paths of the sea and the ocean currents, which only recently, in the 19th century, Matthew Murray, the father of oceanography, discovered and validated that the ocean follows the paths according to the seas? What are the odds that all humans are 99.9% .9 all related, just like the Bible says, and that all early man was from the Fertile Crescent, exactly where the Bible says? We have been genetically deteriorating since the fall of Adam, because sin brought death into the world, and rapid disease increase is evident, just like the Bible describes. Genomic decay is evident. We can see it not only in man, but even of the beast of the world. We can show with the empirical evidence that there is a fast ticking mitochondrial clock in not just man, but all life on earth, as where evolution only uses bias assumption based on their own molecular clock invention which has been calibrated by only using their fossil record inference, not observable, testable, falsifiable predictions. As you can see, when someone says creationism isn't real science, they have no idea what they're talking about. It's far superior science than the biased, assumption-based, filled evolutionary science taught today. Take for example, the best way of measuring mutations is using observable, testable, repeatable evidence to calculate, wouldn't you agree? Well, we creationists take a family tree and say it's been this many generations since the Y chromosome has been separated from its parent common ancestor. We then count up the mutations between them and divide them by the number of generations. Easy. When you do this, you get a very high mutation rate, just like the empirical evidence shows. Most mutations rate calculate anywhere between 64 and 200 new mutations every generation. So you have more mutations than your parents, and they have more mutations than their parents, and so on. This is where the difference comes from. You see, as creationists, we use the observable rates used in the genealogical method, as where evolutionists use their phylogenetic method based off nothing but pure assumption. First, they assume common ancestry to be true, so they immediately add on an imagined, unknown, unfound chimp ancestor. Then, they will take these two genes that are shared between the human and chimps, and they'll count out the number of differences and divide them by 6.5 million years, another assumption the number of years that they assume the human split between the missing chimp ancestor. And that number gives you a very small mutation rate number. So they assume long-scale evolution already to be true, then they assume a missing link common ancestor, then they assume a split occurred between us and them. All storytelling bias assumptions involved. The observable evidence lines up with creation, not evolution, and not even close. And this is what you will see down the line. They do the same thing to mitochondrial clocks, which I showed you before this. Tossing out the actual observable rates tested seen in the lab. Totally biased and unscientific. What are the odds that only three haplogroups, L, M, and N, exist in all humans today on Earth? Exactly from Noah's three surviving families, just like the Bible says. We find this throughout the world today. The Bible got it right. And when evolutionary scientists discovered that there were only three L, M, and M haplogroups, they invented an entire fable to go around this evidence to make it fit their made-up narrative, pretending it was theirs. What are the odds that we're all frugivores, just like Genesis 1 says that God placed man into a garden and gave him every fruit-bearing tree to eat from? What are the odds that all obligate carnivores can love off of plants, just like the Bible says? That's right.
animals in the Bible all started out as plant eaters, it tells us. So what happens when you put a shark or a bear or a lion on a plant diet? They can thrive. That's right, all obligate carnivores can live off of plants, even to this day. Sharks and spiders and snakes and buzzards and piranhas and dolphins and wolves, lions, panthers, house cats, alligators, crocodiles, Komodo dragons have all been witnessed and documented doing just that. During World War II, when meat was rare in Europe, they were feeding the zoo animals in London vegetables because that's all that they had. They all lived on cabbage. What are the odds that the best genetics are tracked to the Middle East, just like the Bible says where man came from? What are the odds that all civilizations arose around the same time, just like the Bible says? How about when the scientists found which came first, the chicken or the egg? Today, we know it's the chicken, just like the Bible says. Again, what are the odds that most religious texts worldwide tell us that man has lived to extreme ages during what is known as the Golden Age? And now we know that language cannot arise on its own, because just like the Bible tells us, God taught Adam. Again, so what are the odds that all humans came from a single female? I don't think people consider this fact very much. Let's just take a look at that last comment that I made about all humans being from a single female. What are the odds of this? If a secular evolutionist even considered this for just a moment, rather than shrugging it off with excuses like there must have been a bottleneck, or there were probably many other women alive and those women didn't have kids, or maybe all of them just had boys, completely non-logical, especially when I describe the scenario for you in a minute. Besides, even according to their own theory, they have no proof of any bottleneck occurring, not in paleontology, the fossil record, or geology in the geological column. So, what evidence do we have for this belief of a bottleneck? They don't have anything for it. That's your answer. A failed hypothesis is all that they have. You see, this is the real problem. According to the evolution theory, about 100,000 to 200,000 years ago, there were about 10,000 to 30,000 individuals. That's an estimate. Now let's just say half were women. That leaves us with 5,000 or 15,000, whatever you want to go with. Let's just say that the average is 10,000 for this debate. So now we have 10,000 different lines of possible mitochondrial DNA to be passed down. Yet we only have one today. What are the odds of this? That's highly improbable. But if you start with a biblical account, this lines up perfectly as to what we would expect and what we do see. There should be just one line, and there is just one line, exactly what the empirical evidence shows. Vast correlations line up directly with what the Bible says, and this is undeniable evidence. But you know what's interesting? When the Human Genome Project mapped the human genome, they said there's only one race of people. You know what that confirms? The Bible. Because we all go back to Adam and Eve, we're all one race. Uh, it just makes the Bible consistent with nature on this one point. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad they agree on that. Yeah. Okay. Notice at the end how he just said, with this one point. Obviously, he doesn't know or care to know about the other points. I have listed at least about 10 that directly correlate. And if you want more, check out our book. There's tons in there probably 50. And this is undeniable evidence with vast correlations that all line up directly with what the Bible is saying, proving that God exists and the validity of the scriptures with undeniable evidence. Yet, people think these are perhaps just a coincidence, made up by sheep herders 5,000, 6,000 years ago, yet they all line up perfectly with science today? I think not. You see, they know deep down that this statistical probability game destroys them. And not only that, but it proves biblical creation. This is why they ignore it and just come up with rescuing devices and excuses to refute it, so that they can continue rationalizing the lie that was sold to them because it is what they want to believe and need to believe. These anti-theists are not open-minded. They are biased critics who hate God and anything related. This is why when I tried to play the game with Aaron, he quickly saw where I was going and stopped it immediately before the audience could hear it and that he would not have to answer the facts contained in the game. I was going to let him off easy and just give him a few, 
but imagine him reading the huge list of undeniable evidence that actually exist in our work. There would be nothing he could say. Look at what happened when I tried to play this game with Arn. What I usually tell people is rather than just constantly going against evolution, I would like to say that we have a way to determine whether or not our model or whatever you like it to be, we can look at with statistical odds. We can take the Bible and we can line it up and we can say, well, what are the odds? We can do this. We can go, what are the odds that all human beings are related by 99.9%? .9 what are the odds, are the that, odds? All, uh, that human okay, beings have no, no, We're not going to do this. These people hate creationism. They hate it so much. The reason why is because if evolution is false, there's only one other option, and that is creation. And if you think there is something else, prove it and leave your comment below.